Okay, our main doubt is referred to the correct pitch diameter related with the printing circumference. That is why we made the following analysis. Printing machine repeat calculation variable. 87 two, 10 pitch, pitch diameter 8.700, sleeve times 2.010, sticky bag times 2.040, print plate times 2.134, bare cylinder diameter 8.520, cylinder supplier recommendation. Right. I understand that they recommend 8.520, which is 4,000 is too much. Then, uh, then pitch diameter without squeeze. I think you meant there with squeeze factor because 8.704 is 4,000 too much. So that's with squeeze factor, I think. Which the squeeze factor is, la presión, 0 0.004. Printing circumference equals place cylinder repeat with squeeze factor. 27.344. That is the circumference if you use the pitch diameter with the 4,000 too much, 8.704. All right. And then you go on to, pro you propose 27.332, which is the number that we had up here. All right. And you mention a squeeze factor to be controlled to have a correct repeat of 0 0.013 inches repeat distortion if we will not be able to manage the squeeze factor. I don't think that any of that is important because if you were my friend and I'm sitting down with you and we're talking, I tell you, unless you have a good reason, you make the distortion to the theoretical pitch diameter of 8.700, not to another number. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. You might find out somebody explains it to you better, but they have to explain it to you. What is the reason? So now you say theoretical bare cylinder diameter 8.516 as per Spencer's Pettis calculation methodology. methodology. I was not aware of the Spencer Pettis gear manufacturer uh, methodology. But you say, remark, how to determine bare cylinder diameter to determine cylinder diameter before rubber plates are mounted. Subtract double the plate thickness from the pitch diameter. When mounting sticky back, with sticky back, plate thickness equals total sticky thickness of plate and sticky back. That's what I said in that first uh, tape. That's what I said up here when I said just do it to the theoretical pitch diameter. Uh, I agree with that so far, and nobody has explained to me a good enough reason to go away from that. I like 8.516, but you have to make that decision on your own. All right, and then you go on to say, on the other hand, is it possible to manufacture to manufacture a cylinder considering three decimal places? Well, uh, I'm not exactly sure I understand that question because. Um, when you mean manufacture the cylinder to de three decimal places, are you speaking of just the diameter or are you speaking about the total indicated runout or TIR? And uh, the TIR, if you look at um, uh, flexo, uh, flexography principles and practices, the total indicated runout for a flexible cylinder is if you're doing line work, you know, nothing very high tech or anything like that, then you want it to be to 0 0.001 inch TIR. If you're doing fine process work, then you want your TIR to be 0 0.0005. And some people will say maybe even even tighter than that, but that's a challenge for the for the cylinder manufacturer. And the total indicated runout is a little bit different different than the diameter itself. You can have a very precise diameter, but if the cylinder is going like this, then the runout might be greater than the precision of the diameter. So um, I, I think that anybody that can control the TIR to within these parameters is going to be fine for you. But now, ha having said that, 
Um, if you're talking about just the diameter itself, you know, and you're concerning yourself with uh, ten thousandths versus a thousandths precision on the cylinder, but you have four thousandths over impression based on the cylinder and four thousandths over impression maybe based on the mounting tape. That's the scary animal right there that I would look at. Now having said that, of course, TIR is important. You don't want the cylinder to not be perfectly round. Or you want that as perfect as possible, okay? So, um, I hope that helped you out a little bit. And um, I'm going to look at, let me, let me look at another thing you sent me by email real quick, see if I have any comments about that. Oh, okay, I'm going to answer your question about um, uh, that machine that you have running in line with uh, a rotary machine running in line with a flatbed machine. That's, a, that's an interesting situation. Okay, Antonio, I hope that helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and uh, or post some more questions on the bulletin board and, uh, and I'll, I'll try to, to answer it. And I apologize for taking so long to get to it, but it's been pretty hectic around here. So uh, thank you and take care.